next several months, the Spokes and Review staff, in conjunction with the Spokane Police Department and other area agencies, will try and shed some light on some of the region's unsolved crimes. Sergeant Joe Peterson, a supervisor with Spokane Police Department's Major Crimes Unit, said the investigators involved in murder cases treat each of them as a priority. We're working for the victim more than anything else, you know. That's why, you know, I'm proud to say that if you look at our cases over the years, the, vic the, the social status of the victim, the economic status of the victim means nothing to us. It doesn't matter if it's a, and I think you can see time and time again, if it was a hobo that was, had no ties to Spokane, no relatives anywhere, gets murdered in Spokane. If it's a dope dealer that gets murdered in Spokane, that person gets the same degree of attention as if it was the governor's daughter. Rapidly changing technology has altered the way DNA testing can be used by investigators. We have DNA, but five years ago, the amount of trace DNA that you needed to get a result was much greater then than now. You, you know, in, in five years from now, it'll be even better. The Washington State Patrol Lab in Cheney runs the DNA testing for the eastern side of the state. Due to backlogs, however, they can't get to the cold cases very quickly. When they do get to them, the hope is the suspect is already in the database. Our biggest potential for solving those crimes is the fact that most um, convicted violent offenders will reoffend again or offended before. Knowing that that occurs, the best potential we have for some of these cold cases is to find the suspect's DNA and run a search in CODIS, um, and if the person has reoffended again or had reoffended prior, then that should give us a name to give to the detectives.